Dr. Labla is here with me again. Always a pleasure. She takes that time off of her schedule. And let me tell you, this is a busy woman, you know. Uh, <laughs> so this is a real commitment, a, a labor of love uh, to bring the message and more so a message of hope. Yeah. You know, yeah, hope and, and survival. And that's what we are about this morning because joining Dr. Labla is Darius Emrit. A young man, attorney at law, out of the Southland, he's on the Zoom line, and we're looking at Darius here. He is a cancer survivor. Well done, Darius. You know, kudos to you for for the strength, the the capacity to to go through and come out on the winning side. Good to see you, Darius. Good morning. Good morning, Jason. Thank you very much, Jason. Good morning. Good to see you, Dr. LeBlanc. Good morning. Good to see you, as always. Morning. <laughs> That's right. And he's also our global hero of hope. Yes. Yes, Dr. LeBlanc. I know you mentioned he's going to bring one of our survivors on. And, you know, it's, it's a good look because I think, yes, sometimes the discussions, uh, it's, it's hard hitting. It's, you bring it real all the time. But I think this is really that silver lining by that particular dark cloud that is cancer, that would be right... Uh, approach, early detection, the right team around you, you could be like Darius and come out on the winning side. Definitely, definitely. And so when we were thinking of nominating a Global Hero for Hope this year, because as you know, we have our Global Relay for Life this year um, in conjunction with the American Cancer Society. And um, Darius immediately sprung to mind for many reasons. Um, he... If you ever meet Darius, he emanates hope, he emanates resilience, and with a just very calm composure, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I thought it was important for us to have someone who can illustrate youth, not only being a, and it didn't have to be a woman, because we see a lot of women talking about cancer, and not enough men, I find. Um, and then just him being who he was, to spread that, that voice of hope and to show that spirit of hope and resilience. You know, Darius, in that regard, now Dr. Labla, you know, she just uh, gave us the, uh, the perspective there, but walk us through your story. I mean, you're a young man, 30s from what I understand, so your diagnosis would have come into your 20s. In your 20s, you're not even thinking cancer, you're thinking travel, you're thinking purchase and I would imagine your house, you're looking for land, you're looking to live your life. Here it is, a diagnosis came your way. Walk me through that day, the approach, the mindset. Take us back. Well, that day would have been September 9th of 2021 when I was formally diagnosed. Um, you know, at the time, there was a lot of fear. There was a lot of concern. As you said, I was 29. So at 29, there's a lot of thoughts of the future, profession, house, family. How does this now fit into play? And something inside me just clicked. And you know, you usually hear talks around cancer survivors and the general topic of cancer. And you hear that your mind plays such an important role during this time. So for me, something just clicked. And I said, you know what, if there was any time for you to be positive, for you to be hopeful, for you to focus and fight, it's now. And since that day, something just switched and I've been running on that. And me through my entire diagnosis, having a positive outlook and knowing that this diagnosis is just a chapter in terms of treatment and surgery and the rigors of getting through it. And I knew that there was a bright light on the other side of that. So I just buckled up for that year that I had to take off to see about myself and my health with treatments. And now I'm on the other side of that, thankfully. Yeah, thankfully. Darius, walk us through the toughest moments, uh, more so the chemotherapy. Uh, what was the, the toughest physical uh, pushback you had to really overcome? So chemotherapy was definitely difficult. Uh, physically, it takes a toll on the body and it progressively uh, gets a little worse physically as time progresses because I did IV treatment uh, supplemented by uh, the chemotherapy pills. Uh, so tough times, there were difficult moments. I am sorry if you see my camera shake. My cat is uh, behind me. Um, 
Yeah, the, it was physically challenging. Um, however, as I said, the mind is what played such a crucial role, keeping positive, keeping focused, and of course being surrounded by an extremely good support system, which I found in family, friends, and of course in sharing my diagnosis through social media. A lot of strangers and well-wishers as well would have encouraged me and pushed me along. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess because, you know, Darius is part of the new generation, you know, and the new generation, they are very open, very transparent. So he was able to share on socials. Uh, what's been your experience, Dr. LeBlanc, you know, people putting that information out on the social? In his case, he got great feedback, and I guess that was encouragement. Is that something that's, I guess that's a personal choice. It's a personal choice. And you know, um, maybe I'm fangirling on Darius and you won't see this often, right? So, <laughs> but the thing is that the way Darius puts out his story, it's, it's amazing because you can see that he has that support from his family and friends and he's balanced, so to speak. And so it's important for the younger cancer survivors to not have anger. And, and, and to really get the counseling they need because there is hope and, and you can have a positive life ahead. But we need, it's still a devastating diagnosis. And at that age, you know, as you say, it seems as though your hopes are dashed. And, you know, so it's important when you see that on socials and if you see it in, in Darius's way that he puts it across, it's, it's eye opening and it provokes you to think and to get screened. Now, if you come across, and most of the stories I see, for example, um, there's this um, Good Morning America, um, I can't remember his name now, but his daughter is in her 20s, very early 20s, and she has a brain tumor. Michael something, else? Yes. And so, Strayon, yeah. Right, and how, Michael Strawn, I think his yeah, name is, Strong, and how yeah. she brings it across and that journey it hits you, you know, and it evokes that compassion and knowing that cancer does not care about your age, your race, your social status, who you are. It's, it's something that we all have to fight united. And so his story, all young people's stories, all cancer survivor stories should evoke that in us as a lesson learned and also how to support them. Yeah, you know, well said, Dr. Labla. Darius, I wanna ask you, the surgery, uh, tell me about the recovery. Um, you did it locally and, 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 and just walk me through that particular part. How long was it and how long in terms of the recovery after the, the surgery? So for me, uh, my surgery was done uh, at West Shore. Uh, it was a seven hour surgery. I was under for seven hours. And ultimately I ended up with a permanent ostomy um, which means I now live with a colostomy bag. Uh, but I mean, all in all, the recovery was two months. I view my surgery and the end result of having a permanent ostomy as an opportunity and an ability to stay alive, to be alive, to be here, to be able to share and encourage others and support others along a similar journey. Um, so yeah, my surgery was a Pretty long one, seven hours. It was done locally under Professor Dilip Dan. Two hours recovery and ultimately led me to a permanent ostomy. Mm, wow. So here it is, you know, Dr. Lebla, you know, here it is, Darius shares his story. And I'm sure, again, as you rightfully said, you know, I remember Marcia Miranda, you know, we would have seen women mm -hmm. stepping up. Right. Of course, Darius being a young man. A young man, uh, yes. Changing the whole conversation because, again, cancer also impacts men, and it's very rare that a man sometimes would want to share stories. So, Darius, thank you for, for being so brave and for being so transparent and open. And hopefully others could take a little example here and in their time, also share and it co beautiful i mean and it coincides that it's colorectal cancer awareness month that that's what darius was was affected by because you know you never should think that you're gonna just go through and it can't it can't happen to you you understand and and that's what really for life is about that's what hope is about for you to be aware and to know that there is hope and there is a chance of a second chance of life, so to speak, and you can come out doing much more positive things in your life. But we have to, we, we're giving you the tools, you know. So Darius is is an anomaly, 
in terms of his age, and did he see any, does he have the family history? But then if that, when Darius shares his story furthermore, during the, the, the months coming up to Relay for Life, you will see that Darius did the necessary workup, and that's what we want you to do. Because yes, we talk about screening, where we're looking for the disease in a, a so-called normal population, but then we look at workup. So mm -hmm. there's signs and symptoms that I also share with you that makes you go to the doctor for a checkup. And that's what's important for the younger population. You know, and going back to Darius, younger population, a young man in, in the prime of his life, now early 30s Darius. Is life obviously uh, the same prior to diagnosis? Are you, you know, still in your normal routine or were there, are, you, are there certain adjustments made uh, in, into this new lease, as it were, or, or, on life? You know, Jason, two things that came from my diagnosis that probably altered my life a bit would have been the ostomy, and I have gotten nerve damage to my feet from chemotherapy. However, I wouldn't say it has altered my life drastically. I'm still now able to, you know, enjoy a certain quality of life. Professionally, I'm back to work. Socially, you're back to, uh, you know, being with your family, your friends, your peers. Um, you back to a normal life. It's just a matter of now living with the lessons learned during that diagnosis. And of course, with a much larger network of people because you meet so many people during the course of a diagnosis like doctors, survivors, caregivers who really change your outlook and perspective on life moving forward after you have battled your own diagnosis. So my life is fairly back to a normal, decent standard. And that is something that I want to show that there's a lot of hope, a lot of life and a lot of happiness as a survivor. You know, Darius mentioned the community within within the structure, people who are cancer survivors, those who are going through the paces <clears throat> like he would have gone through uh, when he was diagnosed. That community in itself is, is, I could only imagine, very vibrant. It's vibrant and it's, it's amazing who you meet. And you know, um, as he mentioned, as Darius mentioned, he has his family, his friends. Also, when he goes for when he went for chemo, he would have met other patients um, undergoing chemo, sharing their stories. And you have he's now part of our um, cancer survivors network as well. So he meets other survivors there. Then he meets doctors, his doctors. He meets other doctors. I mean, I met Darius, medically speaking, and and. Um, He's amazing, but people, uh, survivors like Darius inspire us in the medical fraternity to work harder. And, and I mean, that community, you'd be surprised, JW, that you could just be sitting or standing at your checkout in your Massey line, that you didn't go for your, your self-checkout, <laughs> and, and you might meet someone, and that connection, that human connection yeah. is important. And you know, it, sometimes you just need a hug. You just need to talk and not hear anybody speak back to you. Sometimes you just need something explained. Whatever you need, it's important to have that support. And you know, most importantly, the psychological aspect, the mental aspect, the emotional aspect, the physical aspect, it has to be a very holistic journey. And it's never ending, it's dynamic. And not everybody's going to have the same um, sequelae or, or, or side effects or complications. And therefore, whatever comes up, know that there's always going to be hope and help out there for you. You know, Darius, I want to give you the final say, uh, you know, just some words of inspiration and hope especially for those looking on this morning who might be going through their own health challenge. Uh, you will, I mean, you were in it. <laughs> you came out on the, the winning side, and your words and your experience, I'm sure, can and will inspire. Go right ahead, Darius. For those going through a similar diagnosis, I want to say keep positive, stay strong, even if you feel like you don't have that immediate support around you, there are lots of other survivors, caretakers, doctors out there, even locally, who want to reach out, who want to support. Um, for those who are caregivers, keep our survivors strong, keep them motivated. As I said before, there's a lot of hope, there's a lot of life, there's a lot of happiness after this diagnosis and into survivorship. 
Um, for everyone else, please take your health seriously. Your health is your wealth. I know it sounds cliche, but if you feel like you're experiencing something, please see a healthcare professional. Check with your doctors. You never know. Uh, for me, I took my health for granted. You know, at my age, you think you're invincible and nothing could happen to you. But it is a wake up call that don't count yourself out. You never know what may be your story and your journey. So ensure that you take all steps and measures when it comes to health. Ensure that you get your checkups. And if you know you have a family history, get screened. Darius Emirate, the global hero of hope, uh, an ambassador 2024, yeah. 2024, real ambassador. Darius, great to see you again, my friend, and thanks for coming on and sharing with us this morning. Thank you, Jason. That's right, Dr. Labla. Thanks for that inspiration, as always, you know, uh, always a great time. No, he's inspirational in his own, and, and it's amazing. And we thank you for continuing this journey with us as well. Oh, you're most welcome. <laughs> most welcome. <laughs> <You know. laughs> uh, we'll take a pause. We'll take that pause. Uh, God spare, we'll do it again next, next week. Next week, That's yes. right. But up next, we get ready for... You have a piano you need to, to fix? I have a piano. It doesn't well, need fixing. It probably needs tuning. Well, listen, he's tuning. He's fixing. He's doing the works. Uh, well, Julian Blackman. <laughs> yeah, he's coming in now. Uh, so, so Black Piano Services Limited. Oh, that's right. Piano restoration and more. Sir Black Piano. He's up next.